turn it off. Good morning, <laughs> everyone. Uh, welcome to the uh, Public Safety Natural Resource Transportation Joint Subcommittee. Um, the, uh, we will call this meeting to order and ask the secretary call the roll. Assemblywoman Miller. Here. Assemblywoman Monroe Moreno. Here. Assemblywoman Peters. Here. Assemblywoman Titus. Here. Assemblywoman Tolls. Here. Assemblyman Watts. Here. Senator Brooks. Here. Senator Guaycachia. Chair Dennis. Here, thank you. Um, Um, if you um, like to remind everyone that while we as committee members and some staff are here in the committee room, the Zoom meeting is still being hosted for staff and agency representatives to participate remotely. This is due to the current capacity limits on the number of people that can attend committee meetings in person. Those wishing to attend committee meetings in person can register to attend. I've got one. Thank you. Thank you. Those wishing to attend committee meetings in person can register to attend visiting legislature's Nellis website. Members of the public wishing to make a public comment can continue to call in via telephone. There will be public comment period at the end of the agenda today. Um, just a reminder for those on the Zoom meeting, keep yourself muted when you're not speaking. And for committee members, turn off or mute any electronic devices um, you have. Today we'll be closing the budgets for the Division of Parole and Probation as well as eight budgets for the Department of Wildlife. And uh, that's it. So with that, uh, we will start first with the agenda. Uh, budget closing this morning is the, the first one is the Division of Parole and Probation. So if Mr. Speed would uh, start us off here. Good morning, Chair, members of the committee. Uh, Dustin Speed, Fiscal Analysis Division for the record. Uh, this morning, I will be reviewing the Department of Public Safety Division of Parole 3740, which can be found on page three of your packet. This budget has five major closing issues. And the first closing issue is caseload changes, which includes decision units M201, M202, M203, and M204. Uh, based on the caseload projections provided by the JFA Institute, the executive budget recommends uh, staffing level adjustments over the 2021 to 23 biennium that result in the net reduction of 18 staff in fiscal year 22 and 11 staff in fiscal year 23 when compared to the fiscal year 21 staffing levels. Uh, to align staffing with caseload projections, the governor recommends a net reduction in general fund appropriations of $426,349, a reduction of county reimbursement revenues of $1.9 million, dollars and an increase in supervision fees of $210,453 over the 2021-23 biennium. The adjustments to the caseload would result in a net reduction of 18 positions in fiscal year 22 and 11 positions in fiscal year 23. Fiscal staff would note that there were discrepancies in the data provided by the JFA Institute to complete the caseload projections that were used to prepare the executive budget. According to the division, this, the data sources provided to the JFA Institute were corrected for the data provided to complete the spring 2021 JFA Institute caseload projections. Therefore, comparisons to the executive budget have not been included in this closing document, since it would not provide the subcommittee with an accurate comparison. Uh, legislatively really approved staffing ratios can be seen on the tables on page five, and the updated JFA caseload projections are outlined in the table on the top of page six. Uh, the Governor's Finance Office submitted Budget Amendment 8216723740 on April 25th, 2021 to reflect the caseload projections prepared by the JFA Institute. The Governor recommends net position eliminations inclusive of the Budget Amendment relating to adjustments in caseloads of 24 positions in fiscal year 22 and 18 positions in fiscal year 23. The Budget Amendment as submitted reflects uh, reductions to general fund appropriations of $356,833 in fiscal year 22 and $476,696 in fiscal year 23. And county reimbursements uh, of $303,690 in fiscal year 22 and $312,375 in fiscal year 23 as compared to the executive budget. Although the 2019 legislature did not approve the governor's recommendation to change the calculation for staffing sergeant positions using the regional approach instead of the statewide approach, the budget amendment as submitted included the addition of DPS sergeant positions, uh, one in each uh, fiscal year using the regional approach. The governor's finance office confirmed on May 1st, 2021, 
that it was not the office's intent to change the methodology for calculating positions from what was legislatively approved. Therefore, the additional sergeant position should not have been included in the budget amendment. Um, the table on page seven illustrates the position changes recommended by the governor inclusive of the budget amendment. Decision unit M201 uh, adjusts non-sworn positions responsible for pre-sentence investigations. The executive budget as amended recommends reductions in general fund appropriations of $521,311 in fiscal year 22 and $537,058 in fiscal year 23 and county reimbursement million dollars in fiscal year 22 and $1.3 million in fiscal year 23 and the elimination of 21 positions in each fiscal year of the 2021-23 biennium. Fiscal staff has identified 11 positions recommended for elimination in the executive budget that do not correspond with their respective positions to the adjusted base budget. Therefore, fiscal staff recommends a technical adjustment to reconcile the positions, which would result in general fund appropriations of uh, $53,564 in fiscal year 22 and $50,837 in fiscal year 23, and county re reimbursements of $124,981 in fiscal year 22 and $118,621 in fiscal year 23, as reflected in the table above. Um, decision unit M202 adjusts sworn positions. As previously mentioned, we've worked with the governor's finance office and eliminated the additional sergeant positions. Fiscal staff recommends a technical adjustment to eliminate those positions uh, and one associated vehicle to be rented on a monthly basis from the fleet services division, which would result in a decrease in general fund appropriations of $90,808 in fiscal year 22 and $253,366 in fiscal year 23 compared to the budget amendment as submitted. The executive budget as amended included the, including the elimination of the sergeant positions and the associated fleet services vehicle described rec, uh, recommends reductions in general fund appropriations of $603,450 in fiscal year 22 and $236,680 in fiscal year 23 an increase in supervision fees of $210,453 in fiscal year 23 and the elimination of six positions in fiscal year 22 and one position in fiscal year 23 as displayed. Uh, the decision unit M203 adjusts non-sworn positions uh, in the interstate compact unit and post-conviction unit. The interstate compact unit monitors parolees and probationers and uh, facilitates transfers of offenders who have been transferred to and from Nevada for supervision. The interstate compact for adult offender supervision allows for a controlled movement of eligible offenders between all 50 states, as, as displayed in the previous table. The executive budget, as amended, recommends in general fund appropriations of $176,692 in fiscal year 22 and $177,846 in fiscal year 23 and the elimination of two positions in each fiscal year of the 2021-23 biennium. Decision unit M204 adjusts non sworn positions responsible for the pre-release unit and the warrants and extradition unit. As displayed in the previous table, the executive budget as amended recommends an increase uh, in general fund appropriations of $309,407 in FY20, uh, fiscal year 2022 and $339,570 fiscal year 2023 and the addition of four positions in each fiscal year of the 21 2023 biennium total funding reductions of 2 point million dollar or 2 2 million dollars uh, which include 938,482 dollars of general fund in fiscal year 22 and 1.5 million which includes 561,169 dollars in general fund in fiscal year 23 are recommended for the adjustments to caseload which is inclusive of decision units M201, M202, M203, and M204 in the executive budget, inclusive of the budget amendment H216723740 as submitted by the governor's office and with technical, the technical adjustments noted. Does the subcommittee wish to recommend total funding reductions of $2 million, uh, $2 million and $938,482 in general fund in fiscal year 22 and $1.5 million inclusive of $561,169 of general fund uh, in the decision units M201, M202, M203, and M204 to reflect the spring 2021 caseload projections prepared, uh, prepared by the JFA Institute as recommended by the governor, inclusive of budget amendment A21672740 and the technical adjustments noted. Okay. Do any questions? I don't see any. Um. 
Uh, Madam Vice Chair. Chair, I move that the subcommittee recommends the total funding reductions of $2 million, including $938,482,000 from general fund in FY22 and $1.5 million with $561,169 from general fund in decision units M201, M202, M203, M204 to reflect the spring 2021 caseload projections prepared by the JFA Institute as recommended by the governor inclusive of budget amendment A216-723-740 and the technical adjustments noted. Second. We have a motion uh, by Chair Miller, second by, uh, and we, um, any further discussion on the motion? Yes. Uh, Assemblywoman Monroe Moreno. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I understand the reasons why we we're making decisions today that we're making, but when we look at the positions that we're reducing. We've heard over and over again and year after year in this legislative body of how our state law enforcement, especially our parole and probation, their caseloads are higher. We're asking more and more of our law enforcement to take on and, and removing positions. I understand why we're having to make decisions, but it pains me in, in having to make some of the decisions we have to make, especially when it comes to our parole and probation, you look at the pre-sentencing numbers, that's gonna mean people are gonna stay in local jail facilities um, longer because of the pre-sentence investigations. Right. Um, so I understand why we're making it, I just don't like it, so. That happens more often around here than we would like it to. Any other further discussion yeah. on the motion? Yes, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And along those same lines, I'm, I mean, we're starting to look at some numbers that are uh, significantly better than what we thought we were going to see coming in. And at, at what point in this process, and I guess maybe this is more to staff than anybody, are we going to go back and maybe re revisit some of these closing items we're putting in place and, and maybe say, hey, we can, we can probably afford another dime here? Mr. Chair, would you like us to respond? Yes, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, for the record, Sarah Kaufman, Legislative Council Bureau. Uh, yeah, so uh, as of right now, this is a subcommittee hearing. You will have closing reports uh, where it gets brought up to the full committee. There is opportunity at that point in time then to also um, discuss opportunities for adding back um, some dollars. Um, with this particular item, I, I would just add, though, um, that these are, are caseload-driven. And so um, any, any um, positions that are added to this, um, staff would just have to go back and, and try to uh, talk with uh, parole and probation to see how this would, would impact their caseloads um, to, to determine uh, what the appropriate amount would be based off the decisions of the subcommittee or the full committee. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? All right, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any, any opposed say nay. Motion carries. All right, let's go on to the next item. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Dustin Speed, Fiscal Analysis Division for the record. Uh, the next item will be the new low risk offender supervision model, which is decision E225, uh, which can be found on page eight of your packet. Uh, the governor recommends general fund appropriation savings of $955,174 in fiscal year 22 and $296,668 in fiscal year 23 by establishing a new supervision model that would create a supervision pot or create, would create supervision pots that replace sworn DPS officers with non-sworn parole and probation specialists to assist in the monitoring of low-risk offenders and includes modifications to the staffing ratios. The new supervision model would allow, uh, would for low risk offenders would result in the reclassification of 21 vacant DPS officer positions to parole and probation specialist threes and a proposed change to the staffing ratio for DPS officers from one to 150 to one to 500. The governor's finance office submitted budget amendment 8216723740 on April 25th, 2021 to reflect the spring 2021 caseload projections prepared by the JFA Institute, which recommends an increase uh, in general fund appropriations of $155,509 in fiscal year 22 and general fund appropriation reduction of $259,037 in fiscal year over what is included in the executive budget. 
and net elimination uh, in the net elimination of 21 DPS officer two positions in fiscal year 22 and 22 positions in fiscal year 23, and the addition of 19 parole and probation specialist uh, positions in fiscal year 20 uh, in fiscal year in each fiscal year of the 2021-23 biennium. Fiscal staff has identified a position recommended for elimination in the executive budget as amended by the uh, budget amendment that does not correspond with the respective position in the adjusted base budget. Therefore, fiscal staff recommends a technical adjustment to reconcile the position, which would result in general fund appropriation reduction of $1,859 in fiscal year 23. Total reductions in general fund appropriations of $799,665 in fiscal year 2022 and $557,564 in fiscal year 2023 are recommended for the new low risk offender supervision model in the executive budget inclusive of budget amendment 8216723740 as submitted by the governor's finance office and the technical adjustment noted does the subcommittee wish to recommend reductions in general fund appropriations of seven hundred ninety nine thousand six hundred sixty five dollars in fiscal year 2022 and $557,564 in fiscal year 2023 to fund a new low risk supervision model as recommended in the executive budget and as amended by budget amendment A21672374 to reflect the spring 2021 caseload projections prepared by the by the JFA Institute with technical adjustments noted. Any questions? Um, Chair Miller. Thank you, Chair. I move that the subcommittee recommends the reductions in general fund appropriations of $799,665 in FY22 and $557,564 in FY23 to fund a low-risk supervision model as recommended in the executive budget and as amended in budget amendment A216-723-740 to reflect the spring 2021 caseload projections prepared by the JFA Institute with technical adjustments noted. We have a motion, second by Senator Brooks. Any further discussion on the motion? All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed say nay. Motion, motion carries. Let's go on to item three. Chair, sure. uh, Dustin Speed, Fiscal Analysis Division for the record. Uh, our next item would be the records management system, which is decision unit E350, uh, which can be found on page nine of your packets. Uh, the governor recommends general fund appropriations of $1.3 million in fiscal year 2022 and $847,000 in fiscal year 2023 to complete development of the division's record management system and fund annual license fees for an off the shelf records management system to replace the offender tracking information system. The funding recommended would complete development and provide for annual license fees of, for parole and probation records management system that would replace the offender tracking information system. Uh, during the budget hearing on February 16, 2021, the agency testified the offender tracking information system came online in 1990, between 1999 and the year 2000, and that the previous modernization efforts failed due to the difficulty of migrating data out of the system. The agency further explained that the data is not clean and that there are no standard accounting principles applied to the current system. The agency also indicated that as part of the one-shot appropriation funds approved in the 2019 session, it would be hiring a master service agreement contractor to help with cleansing data, data mapping, and monitoring the, the tran monitoring, monitoring of the transfer of the data. The agency testified that a realistic timeline to complete the modernization would be between December 2021 and January 2022. In response to staff questions received on March 4th, 2021, the agency stated that to date, uh, $293,078 of the remaining $1.7 million one-shot appropriation funds approved by the 2019 legislature have been spent. Does the subcommittee wish to recommend general fund appropriations of $1.3 million in fiscal year 2022 and $840,000 in fiscal year 2023 to complete the development, uh, to complete development of and provide for annual license fees for parole and probation records management system that would use the offender tracking information system as recommended in the executive budget? Discussion? I just have a, a comment. I, you know, as we look at, as we've looked at all these different upgrade system upgrades with all the different div divisions, um, it's good to see that people are starting to figure out um, 
how some of these systems, how to upgrade them without having issues. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad that they're going to be able to get it up and running quickly um, and that they're going to be able to get the data you know, transferred over. But um, so anyways, I think this is a good, uh, you know, good movement for them to be able to upgrade their system. Uh, any other discussion? Chair Miller, I'll take a motion. Thank you, Chair. I move that the committee recommends general fund appropriations of $1.3 million in FY22 and $840,000 in FY23 to complete development of and provide for annual license fees for parole and probation's records management system that would replace the offender tracker information system as recommended in the executive budget. We have a motion by Chair Miller and a second, second by Senator Gokachia. Any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. But item four. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Dustin Speed, Fiscal Analysis Division for the record. Um, our next item is going to be the Going Home Prepared Program, which is decision unit E356, uh, which starts on page 10 of your packet. The governor recommends general fund appropriations of $228,000 in each fiscal year of the 2021-23 biennium to reestablish funding for the Going Home Prepared Program. As part of budget reductions included in AB3 uh, of the 31st special session, the funding for going, uh, the going Home Prepared Program was eliminated for fiscal year 2021. The governor's recommendation would restore uh, program funding for the 2021-23 biennium. In response to questions from the subcommittee during the budget hearing on February 16, 2021, the agency had testified that it had actively pursued community partnerships to help improve the program. The agency also indicated that the resources available to offenders with funds received from the program vary depending on what partnerships were available. For example, the same level of funding would provide for that would provide for two weeks in a motel, in some cases, uh, and five, five to six weeks of housing with programs in other cases. Um, and in follow-up questions from the subcommittee received on March 4, 2021, they just provided the following statistics for the Going Home Prepare program that were based on 211, 211 parole, uh, parolee sample over a three-month period, which can be seen in the bullet points on the middle of page 11. Uh, additionally, the division also indicated that the Going Home Prepare program uh, funds are paid directly to the program provider by the division and no state funds are paid directly to the offender. Does the subcommittee wish to recommend general fund appropriations of $228,000 in each fiscal year of the 2021-23 biennium to reestablish funding for the Going Home Prepared Program as recommended in the executive budget? Do we have any discussion or any questions? Chair Miller? Thank you, Chair. I move that we recommend general fund appropriations of $228,000 in each fiscal year of the 21-23 biennium to reestablish funding for the Going Home Prepare program as recommended in the executive budget. We have a motion by Chair Miller. Second. Second by, second by Senator Gokachia. Further discussion on the motion? All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. Let's go to item five. Uh, thank you, Chair. Dustin Speed, Fiscal Analysis Division for the record. Uh, our next item will be staffing study, uh, which was included in Budget Amendment 8216723740 and was not included in the executive budget. A staffing study was approved during the two, 2019 legislative session for the agency to conduct a, st a staff study to assess caseload for parole and probation specialists, but was eliminated due to budget reductions. During the 2019 uh, Legislative session, a workload study of parole and probation specialist four positions within the pre sentence investigation unit were, was approved. The goal study was to determine the correct workload ratio for the positions. Um, the study was supposed to occur in fiscal year 2020, but was delayed due to COVID 19. The funding was eliminated as part of budget reductions uh, during the 31st special session. L3. The Governor's Finance Office um, submitted the Budget Amendment 8216723740 on April 25th, 2021, which recommends general fund appropriations of $81,000 in fiscal year 2022 to fund the staffing study related to the pre-sentence investigation uh, process and assess the job functions of the parole and probation specialist for positions. Does the subcommittee wish to recommend general fund appropriations of $81,000 in fiscal year 22? to fund the staffing study related to the pre-sentence investigation process as included in the budget amendment 8216723740. Additionally, there was two other closing items which appear reasonable to staff. 
Fiscal staff recommends other closing items one and two be closed as recommended by the governor and request authority for staff to make technical adjustments as necessary. Questions? Comments? Okay, uh, Chair Miller. Thank you, Chair. I move that the subcommittee recommends a general fund appropriation of 81,000 in FY22 to fund a staffing model related to the pre-sentence investigation process as included in budget item A216-723-740 and that other closing items one and two be closed as recommended by the governor and request authority for staff to make other technical adjustments as necessary. Thank you. We have a motion by Chair Miller, second by Senator Gorkachia. Senator Gorkachia. Uh, further discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. All right. So let's go on then. I think we're making a switch here. So the next one item on the agenda is the budget closings for the Department of Wildlife. And I believe we have Mr. Nichols. And thank you to Mr. Speed for the other budget. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. For the record, my name is Colby Nichols. I'm a program analyst with the LCB Fiscal Analysis Division, and today we'll be discussing the Department of Wildlife budgets. The first budget for discussion would be the Director's Office, and this begins on page 13 of your closing packet. There are two major closing issues associated with this account, the first of which is a trio of enhancement decision units for deferred maintenance. These are costs for maintenance at Endow office facilities fish hatchery facilities and wildlife management area facilities, respectively. The combined total for these is approximately 2.1 million and will be funded through the transfer of sportsman's revenue from the wildlife fund. On page 15 of your closing packet, you'll see a series of bulleted points towards the top of the page, um, providing some information about the total funding in each of these decision units, as well as a short description of some of the projects that are included in each of those. These are similar to enhancements that were uh, included in the legislatively approved budget from the last biennium. And similarly, the, the department has worked with State Public Works Division as well as using internal estimates and surveys of its facilities to develop a prioritized list of these maintenance projects and estimate the, the costs. Um, <clears throat> so what we're, what we're looking at for the forthcoming biennium represents um, as, as the enhancements from the 19 biennium represented the highest priority maintenance projects. What we're looking at for the forthcoming biennium are some of the remaining projects, as well as those that have escalated in priority due to the age of the facilities involved. During the budget hearing, the subcommittee had inquired whether the recommended funding in these enhancements would be sufficient to address all of their immediate needs if they were approved. And the agency affirmed that that was the case. Uh, the agency did indicate that this funding is used uh, with the intent of preventing long-term damage or decay of agency facilities, in particular citing building exterior maintenance and repair projects such as roof replacement as being critical to prevent some facilities conditions from becoming unsalvageable. In addition, the subcommittee expressed uh, interest in knowing whether the department would be able to complete all these projects over the course of the biennium if approved, and the agency did affirm that that was the case. Regarding the availability of sportsman's revenue and the wildlife fund to, fund to fund these transfers, as well as the remainder of the enhancements for the department that involve the transfer of sportsman's revenue. Um, I would just briefly state that the wildlife fund um, currently does have sufficient funding to support these. And in addition, um, in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, there's there's actually been a bit of a counter cyclical trend here where there there's a, a level of increased interest in outdoor recreation, including hunting, fishing, boating, um, which has contributed to increases in hunting and fishing license sales. So I, I would just briefly say that there does not appear to be any constraints on the amount of sportsman's revenue to support these requests. So on uh, page 16, you'll see um, the decisions before the subcommittee today. Um, and with, with your okay, uh, Mr. Chair, I would go through these one at a time, or we could batch the motions together to um, maybe save some time. I think if we, I think batching is fine. Okay. So does this, does the subcommittee wish to recommend approval of decision unit E730, which recommends transfers of sportsman's revenue totaling $456,534 in fiscal year 22, 
and $217,510 in fiscal year 23 for maintenance projects at various department office facilities, including those in Elko, Ely, Fallon, Las Vegas, Laughlin, Minden, Reno, and Winnemucca. In addition to decision unit E731, which recommends transfers of sportsman's revenue totaling $386,333 in fiscal year 22, and $513,752 in fiscal year 2023, for maintenance projects at state-owned fish hatchery facilities, including those at the Spring Creek, Lake Mead, Gallagher, and Mesa Valley fish hatcheries. And finally, decision unit E732, which recommends transfers of sportsman's revenue totaling $255,026 in fiscal year 22, $315,104 in fiscal year 23 for maintenance projects at state-owned wildlife management area facilities, including those at the Kirch, Key Pittman, Mason Valley, Overton, Steptoe Valley, and Commons Lake Wildlife Management Areas. Discussion, yes, uh, Senator Mentitis. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I am traditionally um, critical of, of what and Al chooses to use sportsman's revenue on um, as, as someone who pays a lot of money into the sportsman's revenue with my tag applications and license fees, et cetera. But this is well within the scope of what I think is important and, and maintaining and, and um, improving uh, some of these departments and these projects. It's much needed and I, and I definitely support all of these decisions. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Chair Miller. Thank you, Chair. I move that we accept the recommendations from fiscal staff as detailed on page 16. Second. We have a motion from Chair Miller, second by um, Senator Brooks. Any further discussion on the motion? All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. Let's go to item two. Thank you, this is Colby Nichols for the record. The second major issue associated with this account is a pair of decision units uh, to transfer a vacant administrative assistant position and reclassify it to a maintenance repair worker. Again, towards the bottom of page 16, you'll see a pair of bulleted uh, items listed explaining what each part of this major issue, what, what, what each decision unit associated with this major issue is doing. So decision unit E901 is going to transfer one vacant admin assistant position from the data and technology services account to this budget. And the decision unit E806 is going to reclassify that position to a maintenance repair worker. I would just note that as both of these positions have identical pay grades, this is a, a there, there would be no increase or change to the overall personnel costs as a result of these recommendations. And the reclassified position would continue to be funded through uh, the existing funding mix. The position is recommended to be stationed in Las Vegas. Um, in particular, this is due to the acquisition of a new agency owned office in Pepper Lane during the current biennium. And the agency has indicated that the new office is added to the overall regular maintenance needs. Um, <clears throat> the duties of the maintenance repair worker position would include routine ma maintenance of those Southern region building and facilities, as well as other regions of the state uh, on an as needed basis. During the budget hearing, the subcommittee had inquired how the transfer of the admin assistant position would impact the data and technology services budget. And in response, the agency had testified that the departmental reorganization that was legislatively approved in the 19 session had streamlined the agency's operations and created efficiencies. In particular, the agency cited the replacement of several manual or hand keyed data entry processes and the increasing popularity of the use of web-based application for hunting and fishing licenses as specific examples of those efficiencies. Uh, due to these changes, the agency had identified certain administrative duties that are no longer needed. And, and conversely, they had identified a need for increased capacity for maintenance and repair work. Uh, the agency testified that approval of these recommendations uh, was not anticipated to have any impact on the ability of the data and technology services staff to perform their duties. The subcommittee also inquired whether there would be any reduction to the department's cost for contracted maintenance or repair if this reclassification were approved. And in response, the agency testified that while approval of these recommendations would increase their capacity for maintenance and repair, it did not anticipate such a reduction in contract costs. Uh, they clarified that the intent of the recommendation is to provide improved in-house capacity for maintenance, uh, particularly those tasks that are associated with day-to-day -day operations of the facilities. 
Uh, following the budget hearing, the agency has communicated to staff that the duties that this position would be responsible for are currently being performed by other agency staff, particularly those in the engineering unit, um, and that the duties that are so that would be associated with this maintenance repair worker position are not part of any existing contract with the agency. Does the subcommittee wish to recommend approval of the transfer of vacant administrative assistant position and the associated costs totaling $52,379 in fiscal year 22 and $54,572 in fiscal year 23 from the data and technology services division to this budget? And if so, does the subcommittee wish to recommend approval of the reclassification of that position to a maintenance repair worker position to provide general maintenance and repair support for the department's facilities as recommended by the government? Questions, discussion? Chair Miller? I'm sorry, let's keep going on the closing items. Absolutely. In addition to that, there are three other closing items that are summarized on the table on page 18 of your closing packet, which appear reasonable. Fiscal staff would recommend that those other closing items, one through three, be closed as recommended by the governor and request authority for staff to make other technical adjustments as needed. Okay, any questions on those? Okay, Chair Miller. Thank you, Chair. I move that the committee recommends approval of the transfer of a vacant administrative assistant position and associated costs totaling $52,379,000 in FY22 and $54,572 in FY23 from the Data and Technology Services Division to this budget. Also, that the subcommittee recommends approval for the reclassification of the administrative assistant position to a maintenance repair worker position to provide general maintenance and repair support for the department's facilities as recommended by the governor, as well as closing items one through three uh, as recommended by the governor and request authority for staff to make technical adjustments as necessary. Thank you. We have a motion. Second. From Chair Miller, second by, from Senator Brooks. Any further discussion on the motion? All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. Thank you again for the record. This is Colby Nichols. The second budget under discussion would be the data and technology services account, discussion of which begins on page 19 of your closing packet. There's one major closing issue associated with this account. This is a recommendation for one new information technology professional position. Uh, the agency had indicated existing IT staff is not sufficient to support the department. Uh, the intent of this request is to um, lower the ratio of dedicated IT staff to department staff, as well as um, <clears throat> increase the department's internal cap capabilities for application support and development. The additional IT professional position would um, be located in the department's renal office and their primary duties would involve the design, implementation and deployment of various applications and databases for the department. Um, during the subcommittee hearing, the agency indicated that it did have several projects that were awaiting available resources. Uh, following the budget hearing, the agency provided some additional examples of those IT projects. Um, those include additional functionality for the agency's public facing websites, including those used for hunter, hunters and fishers, uh, an application that would track game warden incidents and crimes, uh, and that would be replacing an existing hand log system, various functionality improvements for the agency's urban wildlife application and, and, and modernization automate automation and an increasing focus on mobile data collection uh, related to the various wildlife and game surveys performed by the department. <clears throat> the subcommittee had asked the agency to clarify um, which positions were intended to be eliminated to offset the costs of this recommendation, as there was uh, some discrepancies between what was indicated in the narrative and in testimony and how this decision unit was constructed in the executive budget. So during the budget hearing, the agency clarified that the intent was to partially offset the costs associated with this position through the elimination of one full-time vacant administrative aid position in addition to a vacant seasonal administrative assistant position. So following the budget hearing, fiscal staff has worked with the agency as well as the governor's finance office to correctly align um, the positions that are recommended for elimination um, and to have this accurately reflect the agency's intent 
And as a result, there's a series of technical adjustments. Those are reflected on the first page of this budget's closing. Uh, the result of those technical adjustments reduce the total cost of this enhancement. So inclusive of all of these technical adjustments to correctly align the position costs and the offsets, the, this enhancement would actually reduce overall expenditures in this budget by $14,704 in fiscal year 22, and then uh, have an increase in expenditures by 6,910 in fiscal year 23. And again, as both positions recommended for elimination are currently vacant, there would be no layoffs as a result of uh, approval of this recommendation. The agency had also provided some additional information regarding the impact of the elimination of these administrative positions. And, and similar to discussed previously, um, there have been some efficiencies identified uh, and some process improvements, uh, particularly those related to the agency's call center. Um, essentially, the agency has an increased capability for call center support that doesn't require necessarily dedicated call center staff that agency staff at various field offices around the state are able to uh, support the call center as needed. And, and in addition, the transition to that web-based platform has um, decreased the need for dedicated and centralized call center staff. Therefore, the agency does not anticipate that the elimination of these vacant administrative positions would have a negative impact on the operations of this budget. Does the subcommittee wish to recommend approval of the governor's recommendation for one new uh, information technology professional position and the associated costs, as well as the elimination of the one full-time administrative aid position and the one seasonal administrative assistant position, which would partially offset the cost of the new position with the noted technical adjustments, which, <clears throat> excuse me, which would result in a net cost reduction of $14,704 in fiscal year 2022 and a net crop cost increase of $6,910 in fiscal year 23. Questions? Okay. And this one has a closing item, so if you could keep going. In addition to that major closing issue, there's a total of eight other closing items associated with this account, seven of which are summarized at the table on the top of page 22. Other closing item eight is a technical adjustment. This is to remove a duplicative vacant position. This is a, a technical correction to remove a duplicated position that was erroneously included in the executive budget. Um, fiscal staff has created a, a decision unit E805 that's not included in the executive budget to remove this duplicative position and the associated costs, which results in cost reductions of 57,883 in fiscal year 22 and $60,276 in fiscal year 23, um, with corresponding decreases in the amount of sports and revenue transferred from the wildlife fund. Governor's finance office and the agency concur with this proposed technical adjustment. So fiscal staff would recommend that other closing items one through seven be closed as recommended by the governor, and that other closing item eight be closed with that noted technical adjustment to remove costs associated with a duplicated position from the base budget which results in cost reductions of $57,883 in fiscal year 22 and $60,276 fiscal year 23. And finally, fiscal staff would request authority to make other technical adjustments to this budget as necessary. Any questions on the other items? Chair Miller. Thank you, Chair. I move that the committee approves of the governor's recommendation for one new information technology technology profession position and associated costs in the elimination of one full-time administrative aid position and one seasonal administrative aid position to partially offset the cost of the new position with the noted technical adjustments which would result in a net cost reduction of $14,704 in FY22 and a net cost increase of $6,910 in FY23. Additionally, to close items one through seven as recommended by the governor and closing item eight be closed with the noted technical adjustment to remove costs associated with a dupl duplicated position from the base budget resulting in cost reductions of $57,883 in FY22 and $60,276 in FY23. 
also to grant fiscal staff authority to make any other technical adjustments to this budget as necessary. We have a motion by Chair Miller. Second. Second by Senator Brooks. Um, just one quick correction. It's the administrative assistant position. I believe you said aide, but one is an aide and the other one's an assistant. So, yes. but the, and I'm sure that's what you meant. Okay, thank <laughs> you. There's so much on here. It's like to try to catch all of this. Any discussion on the motion? Uh, all in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. Thank you again for the record, Colby Nichols. Uh, the next budget under discussion would be the conservation education budget that begins on page 23 of your closing packet. There's only one major issue associated with this account. This is a recommendation for two new full-time conservation educator positions that would serve as regional volunteer coordinators at the Reno and Las Vegas offices, respectively. Uh, these new positions would manage those respective regions volunteers programs and their duties would include volunteer recruitment, training, scheduling and oversight of volunteer project budgets and reporting. These positions would also train and guide other agency staff and overseeing volunteer pro projects to allow those positions to focus more on the uh, specific goals of those projects rather than volunteer data collection, timekeeping and reporting. Um, it should be noted that volunteer support is used by the department um, to meet matching requirements for various grants. <clears throat> in addition, a portion of these positions responsibilities would include public outreach, um, including the development and provision of educational programming and, and response to public inquiries. And finally, these positions could assist in other agency programs such as the urban wildlife program as needed. Um, as, as this enhancement is included in the executive budget, it was indicated that the intent was to um, again, partially offset a portion of the cost by essentially replacing two part-time seasonal conservation aid positions. However, the offset did not appear to be included in the executive budget. So following the budget hearing, uh, well, during the budget hearing, the agency confirmed that it did intend to offset a portion of those costs by removing those two seasonal conservation aid positions and Subsequent to the budget hearing, fiscal staff has coordinated with the agency and the governor's finance office to adjust this enhancement to accurately reflect the removal of those costs. Those adjustments are reflected on the first page of the closing document for this account. That is a reduction of seasonal expenditures in, of $85,284 in each year of the biennium. Um, so inclusive of that adjustment, again, the recommendation would result in additional expenditures of $15,783 in fiscal year 22 and $52,178 in fiscal year 23. And the costs associated with the new full-time positions would be funded 60% through federal wildlife restoration grants and 40% through the transfer of sportsman's revenue from the wildlife fund. The agency and the governor's finance office concur with that technical adjustment. And just to clarify, uh, in response to staff questions, the agency indicated that one of those seasonal positions is currently vacant. And while the other is filled, it is the agency's intent to have that filled incumbent in the seasonal position, fill one of these new permanent positions if it were approved. And accordingly, there would be no layoffs of existing staff should the recommendation be approved. During the budget hearing, the agency did provide some additional information about the intent behind this recommendation. And according to the agency, it has to meet various reporting requirements that are set by the federal government in order to be able to utilize those volunteer hours as match. And, and again, the intent of this request is to improve the agency's ability to perform volunteer data collection and reporting in a timely and effective manner in order to ensure the agency is maximizing the amount of volunteer hours that are able to be used as match. The subcommittee had also inquired about what factors were contributing to an increase in public demand for the agency's services. Um, in response, the agency testified that this, this has been a, a historical trend of increasing demand for recent fiscal years. However, the COVID-19 pandemic had further increased the demand for these services. So the agency advised that the duties of the recommended new positions would, would include providing educational programming, including classes and outreach that accommodate virtual and remote learning. Uh, in particular, the agency noticed that it had experienced increased interest in various educational programs related to Nevada's wildlife by teachers. Um, in addition, the agency testified that there's um, existing trends of population growth as well as development, which increased the urban wildlife interface, which further uh, contributes to an increase in demand for 
the agency services related to urban wildlife management, human wildlife conflict resolution, and, and urban wildlife education activities. Um, these are further exacerbated by the persistent presence of drought conditions in the state, which is again uh, contributing to increased human wildlife interaction. Does the subcommittee wish to recommend approval of the governor's recommendation for two new full-time conservation education positions to, to replace two seasonal conservation aid positions with the noted technical adjustment resulting in additional expenditures of $15,783 in fiscal year 22 and $52,178 in fiscal year 2023? Keep going on that closing item. In addition, there are two other closing items associated with this account. Those are summarized on the table on page 26 of your packet. Uh, fiscal staff would recommend those all, all, all other closing items be closed, recommended by the governor and request authority to make technical adjustments in this budget as needed. Okay, any questions? I don't see any, Chair Miller. Thank you, Chair. I move that we approve of the governor's recommendation for two new full-time conservation education positions to replace two seasonal conservation aid positions with the noted technical adjustment resulting in additional expenditures of $15,783 in FY22 and $52,178 in FY23. And that all other closing items be closed as recommended by the governor and request authority for staff to make technical adjustments as necessary. Second. We have a motion by Chair Miller, second by Senator Brooks. Further discussion on the motion? All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Thank you again for the record. This is Colby Nichols, LCB Fiscal Analysis Division. The next budget under discussion would be the law enforcement budget account, discussion of which begins on page 27 of your closing packet. There are two major closing issues associated with this account, the first of which is a new game warden position. This would be a new permanent full-time game warden position stationed at Lake Tahoe with the intent of improving uh, boating enforcement, and providing year-round coverage at that area. Um, similar to the other wildlife accounts, uh, costs associated with this would be um, offset by <clears throat> the elimination of vacant seasonal game warden positions. So uh, as a result, not only does this create a new full-time position, this actually serves as a cost reduction measure uh, and would result in net cost reductions of $59,047 in fiscal year 22 and $32,732 in fiscal year 23 with corresponding reductions in the amounts of sportsman's revenue transferred from the wildlife fund. Uh, the agency does provide recreational boating safety and enforcement patrols at Lake Tahoe. Uh, according to the agency, with the population growth, uh, as well as an increase in recreational boating traffic at that area, uh, the current staffing model, which consists of two seasonal game warden positions, is no longer sufficient to provide uh, adequate enforcement coverage. Uh, there are difficulties associated with recruiting or training qualified individuals in seasonal positions. Um, according to the agency, this is due to the um, fact that other law enforcement agencies offer better compensation and benefits as well as permanent full-time employment. In addition, the seasonal game warden positions have identical, as their sworn officer positions, they have to meet the same uh, certification and, and training requirements, and those can be um, time consuming in, in particular for a seasonal or uh, uh, a position that works less than a permanent full-time basis. The intent of this recommendation is to ensure better overall coverage by reducing the amount of time that other game warden staff in the area are called away from other duties to support voting enforcement in Lake Tahoe. Um, again, it should be noted that both seasonal positions that are recommended for elimination are currently vacant and there would be no layoffs if this recommendation were approved. Uh, during the budget hearing, the subcommittee had asked whether that one full-time position that's included in this recommendation would be sufficient given the increased boating traffic at Lake Tahoe. In response, the agency testified that the intent of the current seasonal staffing model was to provide adequate enforcement during busier seasons. However, those difficulties identified in recruiting and retaining those seasonal positions have resulted in inconsistent enforcement coverage. Uh, again, the intent of this recommendation is to ensure there's a permanent law enforcement presence at Lake Tahoe year round. However, the agency did note it does intend to increase the amount of enforcement coverage during busy periods, such as holidays and weekends, by having other officers in the western region of the state assist this recommended position um, 
on an as needed basis. The agency did also provide some more information regarding those specific challenges it faces in filling those current seasonal positions. Um, as I mentioned before, there, the training and certification requirements are identical to other category law enforcement, category one law enforcement positions in the state. And so potential candidates are frequently applying for other full-time positions with better compensation rather than applying for a seasonal position. And again, those training and certification requirements would reduce the amount of time that seasonal positions can spend on the water providing law enforcement coverage. The agency anticipates that approval of this recommendation would ensure the agency is able to provide adequate enforcement coverage at Lake Tahoe. Does the subcommittee wish to recommend approval of one new full-time game warden position, which would replace two seasonal game warden positions, which results in net cost reductions of $59,047 in fiscal year 22, and $32,732 in fiscal year 23, with corresponding reductions in the amount of sports and revenue that are transferred from the wildlife fund. Questions? Okay, uh, Chair Miller. We'll get to item two. Oh, you're right. Uh, thank you, Chair. I move that the subcommittee uh, approves of one new full-time game warden position which would replace two seasonal game warden positions resulting in net cost reductions of $59,047 in FY22 and $32,732 in FY23 and corresponding reductions in the amount of sportsman's revenue transferred from the wildlife fund. Second. I have a motion by Chair Miller, second by Senator Brooks. Further discussion on the motion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Again, for the record, this is Colby Nichols, LCB Fiscal Analysis Division. The, um, given the way we've approached these, I'll also include the other closing items following the end of each major closing issue for the account, if that's amenable to the committee. The second major closing issue associated with this account is contract costs for body-worn cameras. Governor recommends transfers of sportsman's revenue totaling $35,502 in each year of the 2021-23 biennium. These are contract costs that are associated with equipping the agency's game warden staff with body-worn cameras. Um, while the state statutory requirements for law enforcement agencies to equip their uniformed peace officers with portable recording devices, um, the definition of law enforcement under those statutes does not uh, include the Department of Wildlife's law enforcement staff. However, the agency has indicated the intent of this recommendation is to bring the law enforcement officers in line with industry best practices, as well as a public expectation that um, law enforcement staff be equipped with body worn cameras. Uh, the recommended costs in this enhancement, they, <clears throat> these are based on a quote for body-worn cameras and the associated storage and licensing costs by the same vendor that currently provides similar equipment for the Nevada Highway Patrol. Um, th these costs would be incurred on, in the future as well because this equipment and the service is built on a subscription-based model. During the subcommittee, the the during the subcommittee hearing, the subcommittee asked if there was any such mandate that required the agency to provide its law enforcement staff with body-worn cameras. And the agency confirmed that there is no statutory requirement or federal mandate for this equipment. But again, uh, the intent is to improve transparency and safety for the public and, and to meet uh, a public expectation for law enforcement officers to have body-worn cameras and, and to bring the agency in line with a, uh, modern best practices. Um, following the budget hearing, the agency had provided some additional information regarding this recommendation. The body-worn cameras would be provided to all agency law enforcement staff, which does include the seasonal game warden positions. Cameras would be engaged when agency staff was interacting with the public in an official capacity, and the public could request video footage through the existing processes used for public records requests. The agency would codify their internal policies to mirror practices in line with existing laws for body-worn cameras for other law enforcement personnel, and therefore there does not need to be any statutory or regulatory change if this recommendation were approved. In response to staff questions, the agency indicated that their federal partners, including the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, as well as the Bureau of Land Management, do mandate the use of body-worn cameras for their law enforcement officers. And in addition, there are several other states that have uh, passed similar uh, body-worn camera mandates for law enforcement personnel. 
and those do include their um, wildlife agency law enforcement staff. Does the subcommittee wish to recommend approval of Sportsman's revenue transfers of $35,502 in each year of the biennium for contract costs associated with providing the agency's law enforcement personnel with body-worn cameras? In addition, there are five other closing items associated with this account. They are summarized in the table on page 30 of your closing packet. And fiscal staff would recommend that those other closing items be closed as recommended by the governor and request authority for staff to make other technical adjustments as needed. Any questions? Just have a comment. I, I know it, it, we discussed this in, the, in our hearing and uh, it was, as was mentioned here, there, while there is no mandate, I do believe that this really does provide um, transparency and safety, not only for the public, but for the officer, you know, and these guys are in a lot of areas that are, that, that I think this would be very helpful. So I, 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 I agree with this and um, I think it's important for us to do this. Any other questions or comments? Madam, uh, Madam Chair, Chair Miller. Thank you, Chair. I move that the subcommittee approves of the sportsman revenue transfers of $35,502 in each year of the 21-23 biennium for contract costs associated with providing the agency's law enforcement personnel with body-worn cameras and all, to close all other closing items as recommended by the governor and request authority for staff to make other technical adjustments as necessary. Second. We have a motion by Chair Miller, second by Senator Brooks. Further discussion on the motion? All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The, the next budget under discussion will be game management discussion of which begins on page 31 of your closing packet. There is one major closing issue associated with this account. It's a recommendation for a new pilot position the governor recommends Sportsman's revenue transfers of $119,749 in fiscal year 22 and $119,624 in fiscal year 23 to fund costs associated with the new pilot position. This would be in support of the agency's air operations program, which is based at the Minden Tahoe Airport, where it leases hangar space from the Nevada Division of Forestry. The program currently employs two full-time pilot positions, as well as one full-time aircraft maintenance specialist as well as various contracted seasonal staff to support an air fleet, which consists of two agency Bell helicopters. The agency does also utilize contracted aircraft pilots and maintenance staff on an as needed basis and has an interlocal agreement with the Nevada Division of Forestry to share staff and resources to allow both agencies to support each other's air operations. During the budget hearing, the subcommittee had inquired whether the agency uses unmanned aerial vehicles or drones to support the air operations program. In response, the agency testified that drones are one of several emerging technologies the agency is utilizing to support air operations. However, these technologies are not sufficient to fully replace the use of agency-owned helicopters. Uh, in particular, the agency cited the transportation of uh, agency staff and the slinging of water for the water guzzler program as necessitating the use of helicopters. Uh, in addition, several of these air operations require air travel time that are in excess of uh, the effective range of current drone technology. Finally, the helicopters can be used to physically separate animal herds and packs for more efficient surveying and tracking. The subcommittee had also inquired whether the agency currently owns any fixed wing aircraft. And in response, the agency had testified that it did previously utilize an agency owned Cessna airplane. However, due to uh, infrequent intermittent use of the age of the equipment, the agency had made that decision to sell that aircraft and to use the proceeds to aid in the procurement of the agency's helicopters. Following the budget hearing, the agency provided some additional information regarding the annual amount of flight hours for its pilots and how this recommendation would impact that. And while the Division of Human Resource Management does not have any specific guidance or standards for state employed pilots beyond mandating compliance with federal practices and regulations, the agency did uh, indicate that it had communicated with other state agencies to determine the optimal number of annual flight hours for a state employed pilot. The agency indicated that the Nevada Department of Transportation pilots typically fly between three to 400 hours on an annual basis. Uh, the agency had identified an annual average of 350 hours as being the optimal maximum for their pilots, 
as the flight of rotary wing aircraft for those agency specific scenarios, slinging materials and big game capture are more challenging and involved than standard flight scenarios. The agency provided historical information showing its two existing pilots have averaged approximately 880 hours of flight time in the previous three fiscal years. So about, uh, average about 440 hours per pilot. And based on that average, if this recommendation were approved, each departmental pilot would fly an average of 293 hours a year. Uh, however, I would just note that those numbers, those flight hour numbers, do not account for the time in which departmental aircraft is flown in support of the Division of Forestry through the use of that interlocal agreement previously discussed. And uh, that would slightly increase the flight time figures that are cited by the agency. So therefore, approval of this recommendation would bring the average annual flight time per pilot to about 83% of the agency's identified 350 hour um, optimal maximum for agency pilots. Um, regarding the agency's internal policies for flight time, the agency indicated its pilots have a maximum daily flight time limit of eight hours. Um, exceptions can be made by the agency's chief pilot on a case by case basis. Again, the agency clarified the intent of this recommendation is to increase flight hour capacity, reduce the workload on the agency's existing pilot, and finally, uh, approval of this recommendation could also reduce the amount of compensatory time payouts that are made to existing pilots. And again, increase safety for the departmental pilots and other staff by reducing the average annual flight hours per pilot. Does the subcommittee wish to recommend approval of sportsman's revenue transfers of $119,749 in fiscal year 22 and $119,624 in fiscal year 23 to fund one new full-time pilot position in the associated costs as recommended by the governor? In addition, there are three other closing items associated with this account. Those are summarized in the table on page 33 of your closing document. Fiscal staff would recommend that the all other closing items be closed as recommended by the governor and requests authority for staff to make technical adjustments to this budget as needed. Questions? Chair Miller. Thank you, Chair. I move that we, I move that the subcommittee rec approves of the sportsman revenue transfers of $119,749 in FY22 and $119,624 in FY23 to fund one new full-time pilot position and associated cost as recommended by the governor. And that all other closing items be closed as recommended by the governor and request authority for staff to make technical adjustments as necessary. Second. We have a motion by Chair Miller, second by Senator Brooks. Any further discussion on the motion? All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. Thank you again for the record. This is Colby Nichols, Fiscal Analysis Division. The next budget is the Fisheries Management Account, discussion of which begins on page 35 of your closing packet. There is one major closing issue associated with this account. This is a pair of decision units for a total of three new wildlife area technician positions that would replace contract staff um, or seasonal staff. Sorry, in this case, it's contracted staff for both decision units. So you'll see a, a pair of bulleted points that that's on page 36 of your closing document, uh, providing details for each recommended decision unit. Decision unit E230, the governor is recommending um, $10,598 fiscal year 22 and $46,949 fiscal year 23. This would be for two new full-time wildlife area technician positions and the associated costs, um, with those costs partially offset by the replacement of two contracted positions. These positions would, uh, staff the Lake Mead fish hatchery. Um, <clears throat> in particular, the, the intent of this recommendation is to improve operations at the hatchery by transferring certain project management operational duties from contracted staff to state employees. Uh, the agency indicated that this recommendation could also improve hatchery operations by allowing the agency to dedicate full-time staff to direct supervision of the Lake Mead hatchery. Uh, in addition to oversight of long-term duties, in, in particular, those related to aquatic invasive species related inspections, uh, which include watercraft, watercraft cleaning and inspection. Um, similar to other departmental requests, uh, the agency has indicated that they had trouble um, recruiting and retaining qualified and experienced staff in those contracted positions. Um, and the intent here is um, to improve that 
by allowing these new positions to provide direct oversight on a permanent basis and, 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 and <clears throat> as well as uh, address a general increase in boating traffic in the Lake Mead area. The second decision unit is E231. This is, uh, as the governor recommends it, it's 4,000 additional costs, $4,858 in fiscal year 22, $21,148 in fiscal year 23. Again, this would be partially offset by a reduction to contract staff uh, as the intent of this request is to uh, allow the agency to provide a permanent full-time position that would staff the Alamo roadside inspection station. Uh, again, this is dedicated to aquatic invasive species related activities and is intended to improve some issues that the agency has experienced with recruiting and retaining qualified experience positions in the contract position. Uh, in regards to decision unit E230 for the positions at Lake Mead, the subcommittee had inquired how the agency determined the need for two full-time positions and, and whether one would be sufficient. Uh, in response, the agency indicated that it does have those difficulties in recruiting and retention under that current staffing model. Um, the agency further noted that there is one full-time staff that coordinates the aquatic invasive species program and then two full-time staff that conduct aquatic invasive species activities in the field. Uh, the two existing full-time staff rotate duty locations to support areas during busy seasons. The intent of this recommendation in particular is to provide sufficient capacity and expertise at Lake Mead uh, year-round. Um, the agency testified that this is important due to the fact that Lake Mead has active populations of quagga mussels, uh, which are an aquatic invasive species. And so the aquatic invasive species inspection stations at Lake Mead and in the area are essential in the effort to contain those uh, aquatic invasive species and prevent their spread across the state's other bodies of water and the Columbia River system in the Pacific Northwest. According to the agency, the recommended two full-time positions would improve the consistency and effectiveness of the agency's aquatic invasive species containment efforts by providing year-round experienced staff that would oversee the remaining contract staff. The subcommittee also inquired how many aquatic invasive species inspection stations the agency operates and whether the agency utilizes contract or permanent staff at those locations. In response, the agency testified that it has eight manned inspection stations, uh, including those at Lake Tahoe, Topaz Lake, Rye Patch Reservoir, the Lahontan Reservoir, the South Fork Reservoir, the Wild Horse Reservoir, and the various stations that are along the Colorado River. Um, the majority of which are staffed using approximately 30 contracted staff. And then again, there are the um, the three existing permanent full-time staff that also provide support um, on that rotational basis, as well as high-level oversight of the Aquatic Invasive Species Program. In regards to decision unit E231, which is for the Alamo Roadside Inspection Station, the subcommittee inquired whether transitioning that one position would allow the agency to successfully recruit for the position. And in response, the agency affirmed it did believe that approval of this enhancement would make recruiting and retaining qualified staff at the Alamo station easier. Again, the agency reiterated the intent of this is to improve consistency and coverage and provide additional capacity to train the remaining contracted staff. And the agency does not anticipate any issues in recruiting for this position uh, as they typically experience a high level of interest in their full-time positions. And, and they do anticipate that this proposed position would attract applicants who are interested in long-term employment at the the subcommittee further inquired whether the positions that are included in these two recommendations would aid in, in improving the capacity at the fish hatcheries. And in response, the agency clarified that the primary duties of these positions would be related to the aquatic invasive species program and not necessarily operations of the fish hatchery. However, the new positions could decrease the amount of time that existing hatchery staff spend on other duties, as well as assist in those fish hatchery operations during off-peak boating season. So does the subcommittee wish to recommend approval of decision unit E230 in which the governor recommends fee and federal funds totaling $10,598 in fiscal year 22 and $46,949 in fiscal year 23 to support two full-time wildlife area technician positions and the associated costs with the expenditure reductions of 90,619 in each year, uh, which represent the offset to replace two contracted positions at the agencies like Need Fish Hatchery. In addition, does the subcommittee wish to recommend approval of decision unit E231 in which the governor recommends fee and federal funds totaling $4,858 for fiscal year 22, $21,148 for fiscal year 23 to support one full-time wildlife area technician position with associated costs with those expenditure reductions of $42,217 in each year uh, 
to replace one contracted position at the Alamo Roadside Inspection Station. Keep going on the closing item. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. Um, in addition to that, there are four other closing items associated with this account. Those are summarized at the table on page 38 of your closing packet. Fiscal staff would recommend the all, all other closing items be closed as recommended by the governor and request authority for staff to make other technical adjustments as needed. Thank you. Any questions? Assemblywoman Titus. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Looking at our information that we have here, we on page 35, we get almost $6 million of federal funds for our fisheries management uh, programs. Um, and I'm wondering, um, do we, is this within the scope of what that money's come uh, are indicated when we get that federal funds? Um, when you mentioned that it's fees and federal funds, would we be using some of that's where those federal funds come from, and, and I assume that it's okay to use these federal funds in this manner, because that's not really a fish hatcheries program. Yes, thank you for the question. For the record, Colby Nichols, um, the federal funds that are associated with this recommendation in particular, they're known as the Dingle Johnson or Sports Fish Recre uh, Sports Fish Restoration Act funds. The aquatic invasive species that is an allowable use of this funding. Um, there, for, for specifics, I would defer to the agency. Essentially, my understanding is um, the federal government establishes guidance saying that um, for specific activities, a certain percentage of the allotment to the state can be used for those specific activities. Um, so they're establishing ratios at which, um, so, so I, again, pardon me for not knowing the specifics, but let's say of the amount given to the state up to 12% uh, may be used for boating education and, and a certain percentage may be used um, for aquatic resource education. Um, but aquatic invasive species is included under that scope. And again, for more details, I, I would have to defer to somebody with the agency. Yeah, I, I appreciate the answer. I just, I, I piqued my interest because on page 37, you mentioned that one of the goals here is to can't, to contain these mussels and prevent their spread across other bodies of water, including the Columbia River Basin um, and, and the entire Northwest. I mean, that would be just a tra travesty if that happened. And so I, I, I would assume that the federal funds are okay with that. And that would be actually encouraged to use them for that because, you know, what happens here in Nevada, despite what some of our advertisement would say, doesn't stay here in Nevada, uh, and it, it can be transported across state lines. So I, I would hope that this was um, an okay use of these funds because it does affect what what we take out of our state does affect other water systems. So I just just wanted to make sure that was just what my um, my thoughts were was actually the reality. Thank you. Any further discussion? Oh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and just a brief comment because we're wrapping right through this. Uh, but I, you know, the Alamo Roadside Inspection, I, I don't know, maybe there'd be a better site for that uh, right at the county line where the Logandale cutoff comes in. Or uh, I, I believe there's probably, that, that's a tough place, and if you're coming with a boat, you might not get off there. Clearly, if you're not going to put the boat in per Anigan, you might not stop. And so, uh, yeah, I think it's critical that we do get good inspections on 93 headed north there because once they're get up to you know crystal springs there then they can go through caliente into utah that's uh, pretty wide open and the next real check you're going to get is probably at wild horse or south fork and if you're not going to those waters you're not going to get checked so yeah i, I think it's critical further discussion chair miller Thank you, Chair. I move that the subcommittee approves of decision unit E230, in which the governor recommends fee and federal funds totaling $10,598 in FY22 and $46,949 in FY23 to support two full-time wildlife area technician positions and associated costs with expenditure reductions of 90619 90, in each year to replace two contracted positions at the agency's Lake Mead Fish Hatchery. Also, that the committee approves of decision unit E231, in which the governor recommends fee and federal funds totaling 
$4,858 in FY22 and $21,148 in FY23 to support one full-time wildlife area technician position and associated costs with expenditure reductions of $42,217 in each year to replace one contracted position at the Alamo Roadside Inspection Station. Additionally, that all closing items be closed as recommended by the governor and request authority for staff to make other technical adjustments as necessary. We have a motion by Chair Miller, second by Senator second. Brooks. Further discussion on the motion? All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. Thank you again. This is Colby Nichols for the record. That concludes the budget accounts that were previously heard by the subcommittee. Um, I will now begin presenting the budgets which the subcommittee has not previously reviewed for the Department of Wildlife, and for which fiscal staff is responsible for developing closing recommendations. Uh, I will pause following the presentation of each budget to allow for questions. And when I've presented the last budget in that group and the questions have been addressed, uh, the chair uh, may wish to ask for a single motion for closing consideration on all of the budgets for which fiscal staff is responsible for developing recommendations. The first staff closing budget is the diversity division and discussion of which begins on page 39 of your closing packet. Uh, again, fiscal staff is responsible for developing the closing recommendations for this budget, which has not previously been reviewed by the subcommittee. Uh, the Wildlife Diversity Division is responsible for the management of non-game mammals, as well as uh, raptors, shorebirds, waterbirds, and some other animals. In addition, uh, the programs associated with this division include the Landowner Incentive Program, and then uh, the Department of Wildlife's portion of the Lake Tahoe Environmental Improvement Program. There are no major closing issues that are associated with this account. There are three other closing items that are summarized on the table on page 40. And then closing recommendations for this account would be included in that summary page previously discussed. Any questions? Okay, keep going. The second staff closed budget is the wildlife habitat budget. Uh, discussion of which begins on page 41 of your closing packet. Again, uh, staff is responsible for developing the closing recommendations for this budget, which has not previously been reviewed by the subcommittee. The Habitat Division is responsible for the review, assessment, and providing comments on all proposed land and water uses, uh, as well as providing fish and wildlife data, data to all entities, um, including private developers and then local, state, federal governments. In addition, this division is also responsible for the um, administration of uh, what's known as the wildlife management areas, uh, the water development or guzzler program, uh, rangeland wildlife habitat restoration and then the industrial pond permitting processes are also included in, the, <coughs> in this budget. There are no major closing issues associated with this account. There are four other closing items summarized on the table on page 42 of your packet. And again, closing recommendations for this budget would be included in that summary page. Any questions? Nope. Okay. Any, uh, uh, and thank you for the record. Go ahead. So, pardon me, Mr. Chair. As previously noted, fiscal staff is responsible for developing recommendations for those budgets. Um, so fiscal staff would recommend that the following budgets be closed as recommended by the governor and request authority for staff to make technical adjustments as needed. Those budgets include budget account 4466, the Wildlife Diversity Division, and budget account 4467, the Wildlife Habitat Budget. Okay, any, any uh, discussion? Any questions? Chair Miller. Thank you, Chair. I move that we, that the following budgets be closed as recommended by the governor and request authority for staff to make technical adjustments as necessary for budgets 446 Wildlife Diversity Division and 4467 Wildlife Habitat. Second. I have a motion by Chair Miller, second by Senator Brooks. Further discussion on the motion? All in favor say aye. Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. And with that, good job, everyone. Thank you to staff for good work on, on getting us through these budgets. Um, we will now ask uh, BPS to open public comment line and queue up the first caller. Thank you, Chair. We the public line is open and working. However, there are no callers at this time. Okay, we're gonna give it maybe 
20 seconds and then we will close public comment. So, so if we'll wait just a moment here. Thank you, Chair. No problem. Broadcast standing by. Okay, any, anybody? Thank you, Chair. The, the, the public line is open and working. However, there are no callers at this time. Okay, we'll go ahead and close public comment. Um, and I didn't ask for any, if we had any here in the room, but we don't have anybody here in the room. Um, so we'll go ahead and close that. Um, okay, good job, everyone. Um, we have no further items to come before us today. We are adjourned.